Welcome everyone! In this video, we are in the Great League, showcasing some more fun battles featuring... Trevenant! Trevenant on a very strong and solid team, probably the most widely used Trevenant team in the Great League. This team has been used uh, quite heavily ever since Trevenant came out, and that is just because it is a very strong and powerful team that gives consistent results every time you use it. It is so good that it actually made my top five best teams list overall for the Great League. This was featured as team number five on my top five best teams. So I decided why not uh, demonstrate how I prefer to use the team, and that is with Galarian Stunfisk on the lead. Now you typically see Trevenant on the lead with this team, but I uh, prefer to play it more ABB style where you have two anti-fighters in the back for Stunfisk on the lead. Stunfisk will also obviously pick up those Charmers and those Flyers on the lead as well, along with Azumarill in the back. To close the game strong, Azumarill is bulky enough to perform very well uh, when shields are down in the in-game scenarios. And I do prefer Hydro Pump for the closing potential on very bulky steel types like Registeel, Bastiodon, and of course, Galarian Stunfisk. But without further ado, we are going to dive into a few bonus battles that I thought were tons of fun. And here we go. Picking up a pretty neutral lead in Trevenant. We're staying right here. This is why I generally prefer Galarian Stunfisk on the lead for these ever so popular Trevenant lead options. In this matchup, it is quite neutral. Of course, our back two Pokemon don't necessarily want to see a Trevenant on the lead, so we're staying right here. And we go straight Rock Slide, of course, on this Trevenant. As you can see, one Rock Slide gets uh, Trevenant to about 50% health. We don't intend on shielding. Uh, anything we're just gonna spam off these rock slides just as fast as we get to them and this battler unfortunately i don't believe is playing this the correct way you need one shadow ball plus a seed bomb and the shadow claws to take out an opposing stun fisk they are going straight seed bomb which allows us to grab a two shield advantage as we make an aggressive play into our own trevenant we're gonna look to get ahead on energy because trevenant with an energy advantage is next to unstoppable in the Great League as they meet us with a Sableye. And that energy lead will prove to be quite fruitful as we're going for this hard-hitting Shadow Ball. And it nearly takes out the Sableye. All we need to do is shield once and farm down. And we will have loaded energy for whatever they decide to bring back in. As we say bye-bye to the Sableye. Now the a smart play would be to come back in with that low health Trevenant to get in as much super effective Shadow Claw damage as possible. And that's what they did. Those got us pretty low, but we've got loaded energy and it's an Azumarill in the back. So they did sneak through a bubble. So I don't think that we'll be able to get to another Seed Bomb and we can't quite get to it, but that's okay, guys. We got our own Azumarill to finish this game off. We do have the health advantage. And they see the writing on the wall. They concede the match. That's going to be a good game. Well played to our opponent. This, of course, is a very solid team. About as solid as you can get for the Great League. And here we go. Picking up a not-so-good lead in Scrafty. Um, so what we're going to do is look to chip with an Earthquake. And if they let it go through, we're fine with coming in with Trevenant. Because that will effectively put the Scrafty within Seed Bomb range. So we're going to tank what we thought was a foul play, but holy smokes, they're running Acid Spray on their Scrafty. My goodness. Oh my goodness, they are running Acid Spray on the Scrafty. That is okay. We're coming in with our Trevenant as intended, especially having our defense lowered by two stages. The Scrafty is absolutely within Seed Bomb range. And we are going to shield. Um, they could be running Acid Spray Foul Play, which they are. So that's an amazing shield right there. So we are now even on shields, and they come in with an Altaria. So like I said, Trevenant with an energy advantage is quite formidable in the open Great League. So we're going for the Shadow Ball, and that does quite a bit of damage to a very bulky Pokemon in Altaria. 
And they recognize that uh, they're not going to quite be able to farm down. So they do elect to throw energy. That is amazing. Now, typically, you would come in and look to farm down. But both of our Pokemon do resisted fast move damage to Altaria. So we're just going to come in with the Stun Fisk and just get rid of it with a quick little rock slide. Bye-bye, Altaria. They do come back in with the Scrappy. So we're coming in with a Zoom Roll. We know that we're going to get hit with an Acid Spray. Which is unfortunate, but a zoom roll is about as bulky as a Pokemon gets. And they do have a Galarian Stunfisk in the back. So, um, because we're running Hydro Pump and Shields are still up, we're actually going to bait with a resisted uh, play rough. And they call the bait! Whoa! That is a gutsy call because they don't know what we're running. And we did build up to the Hydro Pump. That would have, a Hydro Pump would have one shot. So, very gutsy call by our opponent, but. Um, we know this is just a rock side, so we tank this. We do live long enough. We need to grab that last shield. So we're going for the Hydro Pump. They're going to either have to shield or lose this game because we will have the energy advantage with our Stun Fisk and switch timers up. So here we go. It's Stun Fisk time. It's time to close this game out. We unfortunately have to shield up a resisted rock slide because we don't want to risk getting farmed down by the super effective mud shots. Dare not get into another move before we could get to this earthquake. As we say bye bye to the stun fisk, and we're gonna farm down the scrafty with mud shot. Stun fisk coming in clutch, closing the game strong. That's gonna be yet another good game. Well played to our opponent. I wanted to feature this team because this is, I have not yet featured this very popular team on this channel just yet. I wanted to show you guys how I prefer to play this very strong team. And here we go, another Trevenant lead. So we're going to play this the same way, and we will find out if our opponent plays this the correct way with their Trevenant. As I mentioned, guys, if you're playing Trevenant on the lead and you're met with a Stun Fisk, you're going to need a Shadow Ball plus a Seed Bomb and the Shadow Claw fast move pressure to take out an opposing Stunfisk. And they do go for that Shadow Ball. So that is the correct way to play it. Um, thus far, they, they still cannot farm down. They're still going to need a Seed Bomb before we can make it to another Rock Slide. But we do decide to snipe that Trevenant with our own Trevenant. And they've got a Wall Rain in the back. So that's okay. We do have the Energy Lead on this Wall Rain. We know that we do thoroughly lose this matchup. They do tank the Seed Bomb, so they're kind of giving us a shot here. We do uh, shield up, probably inadvisable, I would say. But we do have an Azumarill in the back, and we can't quite farm this thing down. So I was thinking the Shadow Claw fast move pressure would be the way to go. Shield once, try and get in as many Shadow Claws as you can before allowing Trevenant to go down. But we do shield again. So this is kind of questionable right here. But I was really hoping to get some more Shadow Claw damage. And because I knew that they had loaded energy. They were overloading on their Wall Rain, as most Wall Rain players love to do. And they've got a Reggie Steel in the back. This is getting a bit rough, guys. We know that we tank a Zap Cannon. Um, so what we need to do to really give ourselves a shot is to potentially catch, but we uh, totally botched that. We should have over farmed and timed the catch appropriately, but we didn't, but we do force the Reggie to throw, but they still have a shield. So we're going to look to bait with the play rough and hope like heck that we can get to the hydro pump but i don't think that we will be able to do that they do still have the wall rain in the back and we cannot farm that wall rain down with our bubbles so it's lights out technically a mon for mon hard counter guys they have the grass type on our ground type the ice type on our grass type and the steel type on our fairy you can't win them all that's gonna be a good game well played Always have to kick it off right with some fun bonus battles as we move into the featured set of the video. We are met with a Alola Ninetales. This is another reason why I prefer the Stunfisk lead variation of this team for the A9 char uh, Charm A9 leads. So they swap out into a Zoom Rule, and we've got the perfect answer to a Zoom Rule in the form of our Trevenant. 
We will shield up the ice beam, of course, and look to get to back-to-back -back seed bombs. And we will begin to unleash these seed bombs upon this Azumarill. Of course, it can tank a seed bomb, no problem. But at this health range, they cannot tank a second seed bomb. The correct play for them would be to let the Azu go down and farm us down with their Alolan Ninetales. But they choose the shield, so... We will match uh, yet another shield. We're fine going down on shield because uh, Azumarill as a closer is bulky enough to close the game strong, especially with Hydro Pump. So we do go to the back-to-back -back seed bombs yet again, just in case they wanted to play out the two shield. But no, they do let it go down and our Trevenant is still relatively healthy. So we're going for the Shadow Ball right off the bat. If they want to go down a shield, completely on shields, that is completely fine. But no, recognizing Alola Ninetales as dead weight, knowing that we have a Stun Fisk, they do let that go through. And that is completely fine as they take us out. We're going to come in and we're going farming with our Azumarill. We're putting on our farming boots and we are going to town on this Alola Ninetales. That is amazing. Azumarill with energy is quite formidable in the Great League. And they do have a Stun Fist, so they do still have a shield. So we're baiting with a play rough, and we do successfully bait. That is amazing. That could not have worked out better. We tank uh, an Earthquake. No problem with XL Azumarill. One of the bulkiest Pokemon around. And we tank that no problem as we get to the Hydro Pump. And in case you were wondering, the Hydro Pump is more than enough to take out the G-Fisk. As we say bye-bye to the Galarian Stun Fisk. Azumarill closing it strong yet again. Making a strong case for Hydro Pump as the closer. That's going to be a good game. Well played. Oh guys, as you can see, this team is quite strong. But I'm sure many of you already knew that. Um, I just really wanted you guys to see how I prefer to play. I think this is truly the best way to align the team. For reasons like this, guys, we got a Charmer on the lead in the form of Shadow Grand Bull. Yet another reason why I like leading with G-Fisk and safe swapping Trevenant on this very powerful team. Um, we do go straight Rock Slide. We don't. We definitely don't need an Earthquake, especially when shields are up. But we will shield up the potential uh, close combat. But no, they do bait us with a Crunch, and they get the Defense Drop, which is unfortunate. But we're aggressively farming down that Charmer, and we have Loaded Energy as we traded most of our health for the Loaded Energy. That is quite all right. They make a play into a Metacham. And we have just the perfect answer for a Metacham yet again in the form of Trevenant. We tank one Ice Punch, no problem. We aren't resisting this fast move pressure. And we just go straight Seed Bomb when, se when shields are up. Seed Bomb plus the super effective fast move pressure on Metacham is more than enough to take it out in the two to one shield. And we do have back to back. So we go for the next Seed Bomb right off the bat. And we know that we outpace to a third seed bomb so all we have to do is shield up the next ice punch and we will be sending the meta champ back into its pokeball courtesy of a seed bomb from our trevenant they decide to not catch even if they did catch we were fine with that not a big deal the meta champ is just about done and they've got a unova stun fisk in the back so this is looking pretty good for us, even though they can absolutely threaten with the super effective discharges. Stunfisk does not hit particularly hard. They need three super effective discharges to take out our Azumarill. And they will not quite make it to three, guys, because we're running Hydro Pump on our Azumarill for the closing potential on these very bulky ground and steel types in the meta. Bye-bye, you Nova Stunfisk Azumarill. Closing it strong yet again in the Open Great League. You'd love to see it. That's going to be a good game. Well played. You guys never thought of Azumarill as a closer, but my goodness, with Hydro Pump, guys, Azumarill can close a game like none other in the Great League. And here we go. Licky Tongue on the lead. Pretty neutral lead. Obviously, our Trevenant wants nothing to do with this Licky Tongue, and Azumarill has a pretty neutral matchup as well. So we're fine to stay in here. We'll fight for lead if we can, uh, where we can. We're just going to feel them out and see how they look to play it. They did shield up the first Earthquake, so we'll look to match that shield and shield up the neutral uh, Power Whip. 
um, and look to go for another earthquake. Uh, they can absolutely tank an earthquake. So, uh, if but if they want to go down on shields, uh, by all means, we will absolutely take that. But no, they do tank the next earthquake. So, we're fine tanking the next power whip. We are just keeping up with the pace of this licky tongue here. That's how I play licky tongue on the lead with stunfisk. And we do go for the rock slide bait. Seeing that they shielded our earthquake, I'm thinking they want to fight hard for lead. But no, they do let the rock slide go through. That is quite all right. We're going to look to go for another rock slide. They are within range. We know that this is just a potential body slam. Not going to cut it, guys. We're a steel type and we're bulky. So we're going for another rock slide. Uh, if they want to win lead, they're going to have to go down on shields. And they do. That is amazing, guys. Stunfisk, a strong lead in the Great League. So now what we're going to do is come in with our Azumarill and look to farm one of the bulkiest Pokemon in the Great League down with our bubbles. Like I said, Azumarill with energy, especially when it's running Hydro Pump, is quite strong. And they've got a Bastiodon in the back, guys. Speaking of Hydro Pump, this is why I prefer Hydro Pump when you've got Azumarill in the back or on the lead. If you run it as a safe swap, I think Ice Beam's the way to go. Gives you the most flexibility on the safe swap. But if you're closing with Azu or leading with it, Hydro Pump all the way, guys, for this reason. Uh, it gives you the best chance against these strong, bulky steel types like Bastiodon. We get to another Hydro Pump. We tank Stone Edges, no problem, with XL Azu as we say bye-bye to the Bastiodon. Oh, and they've got a Metacham. It's lights out, guys. GG's trainer, thank you so much for the battle as they top left. It was lights out. That meta champ did not stand a chance. And that is going to be yet another good game. Well played to our opponent. Team number five was cleaning up quite nice in the open Great League, guys. And as you can see, we're going up against some real teams on day one of season 11 of Pokemon Go Battle League as we are met with a Lurantis. So, Lorantis actually has a positive matchup against Stunfisk. They do have to land one superpower, though. So, we know that we can tank a superpower, even a non-debuffed one. And we know that they are well past a superpower. But we're going to tank it just in case it was a bait. But no, they do go straight for it. And they have debuffed themselves as we do trigger the cmp tie to the next rock slide and we do draw the shield so we don't want to go uh completely down on shields but we will shield this and look to catch the next move they go for the leaf blade bait not wanting to debuff themselves even more so we're going to catch the next one thinking that it may have been a superpower but I, I think they were a little shy and they only needed a leaf blade so we do catch that resist the damage debuffed I might add, Honor Trevenant as they make a play into a Talonflame. Now they have to make a, a very uh, tough decision. Do they want a shield? They do go down on shields. That's why Trevenant is so powerful in this meta. It can grab shields like you wouldn't believe. And we're looking pretty good here. We know that this Talonflame is absolutely loaded on energy and fully expecting a Brave Bird, but we tank that no problem on our XL Azu. We will shield up the second one as they are thoroughly debuffing themselves, which will give us a, a, a nice healthy farm on our Azumarill, enough to have two of our charge moves loaded, of either one, I might add. Uh, and they've got a Jellicent in the back, and we knew that we had some loaded energy on our Stunfisk. We're taking advantage of the misaligned switch timers because we really, really wanted to chunk some health on the very tanky Jellyfish. And they look to catch the rock slide on their Lorantis. This is beautiful. We wanted to get rid of this thing anyways. We didn't want our Azumarill anywhere near that Lorantis. And the Jellicent is forced to throw. But guys, the damage has been done. Stunfisk is a monster, guys. It put in some work with low health. That was insane. And I'm thinking this Jellicent is just about within range. And they are, as we say bye-bye to the tanky jellyfish. Azumarill closed in it strong yet again. Would you believe that, guys? My goodness. Good game. Well played. Hopefully I'm showing you guys some new things that you may not have yet seen with this team. Particularly my playstyle and how I play the team. 
on this channel. And here we go, picking up an Obstagoon on the lead. So tricky lead, of course. They are applying super effective fast move pressure with these counters. But we can put up a fight with our Stunfisk. That is how powerful it is. And they are running cross chop. So we're going to look to get off an Earthquake and look to time a catch onto our Trevenant, guys. Because if they let it go through, which they did there, it puts them within Seed Bomb range. And we do successfully catch the resisted damage on our Trevenant. And that is beautiful as they make a play into a Talent Flame, guys. Man, this is tricky. A lot of battlers would bait right here with shields up, but we're not baiting and we're nearly one shot in the talent play, guys. You got to play to win in the Great League, especially with rankings coming back. Normally, I would not shield there, but they let that through and we are flipping switch with our Trevenant, guys. One of my favorite safe swap options in the Great League right there with Sableye, and we're going for the Seed Bomb. This will KO if they decide to no shield, but no, they want to um, take out our Trevenant for whatever reason. We're fine with that. Trevenant put in the work. We're fine to let it go down, and we are farming down, putting on the farming boots yet again with our Azumarill. We know that this Obstagoon can do nothing to our Trevenant. We resist all of the damage. And they've got their own Azumarill in the back. Shiny flexing on us, but that is quite all right. Um, we are even on shields. And this is why you have to absolutely run play rough in the Great League for the Azumarill mirror matchup uh, more than anything. Of course, you can one-shot the fighters and uh, other things with it. But mostly for reasons like this. And it looks like they're not running play rough, guys. You got to run play rough. Uh, there, There's no... That is not um, that is not optional in my opinion. Absolutely need it for these mirror matchups because as you can see, this opposing Azumarill is absolutely struggling without play rough. That is why it is a must and um, they've got Ice Beam, yeah. You need play rough, guys, for this reason and um, hopefully our opponent is finding out uh, through experience and they let it go down. That is unfortunate. And we're just farming down that obstacle and closing it again with Azumarill. Would you guys have ever believed that Azumarill was a powerful closer in the Great League? You'd love to see it, guys. And that is the team. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so, yeah, very powerful team. Strong enough to make it onto my top five best teams for the Great League. Of course, I did not create the team myself, but I recognize that it is a powerful team and absolutely worth being on my top five best teams overall for the Great League. And hopefully I was able to demonstrate my preferred way of playing the team, guys. A, sw a slight minor tweak. Now, generally, you do see Trevenant on the lead with this team comp, but I prefer to run it in a bit of an ABB style, guys, where you have two anti-fighters behind Galarian Stunfisk on the lead. I think that is the most optimal way to play it, and you still have tons of flexibility with uh, the team if you happen to lose lead with G-Fisk, if things go awry for you. You still have tons of flexibility with Azumarill and Trevenant in the back. I do just, I just prefer leading with G-Fisk. You got a lot of charm leads, a lot of flyers. You got a large tanky spider that a lot of people love to lead with. G-Fisk on the lead with this team, in my opinion, is the best way to play it. With Trevenant on the safe swap. And as we saw, Azumarill can close the game strong, guys. So uh, I hope you all enjoyed. I had a blast, guys. As always, I thank you for watching and keep up the grind. Thank you, guys.